In this video, I'll show you how you can use web objects for displaying more complex text formatting. From time to time, I've had a need to display text formatting in a much more precise way than perhaps Adobe Captivate is capable of doing under all circumstances. Uh, a couple of the areas where I've run into this is uh, with particular paragraph spacing, uh, as well as like bulleted and, and numbered lists, as well as tables. Tables is an interesting challenge. So what I've done is I've come up with a solution that I think works uh, somewhat foolproof in almost every situation, and that's to use a web object displaying the contents that I wish to display uh, as an HTML file. So what I've done here is I've used actually a free open source um, composer tool, which allows me to create my own HTML uh, HTML files and I've just written some examples of how paragraph spacing should normally look and I've included a table here as well just to make it a little more complex and I can save this uh, as an HTML file we'll just call this um, instructions and we'll call the file instructions as well and that we'll just put on our desktop for now for ease, ease of use. And go back to Adobe Captivate and go to the interaction, sorry, the objects drop down icon and select web. Now, surprisingly, a web object doesn't have the ability to uh, select, and let's just size this up accordingly here. It doesn't have the ability to select an htm file or an html file but uh, we can kind of trick it to do that for us so i'm just going to place this web object on the screen here i'm going to leave some room for future buttons and things like that and let's just go to the properties panel you can see here uh, this is the web object and there's a few things that we can do here starts off by looking for an address and you know normally you would type in www.adobe.com as an example but you can actually put anything you want in here and uh, very precisely because of course uh, html is case sensitive we're going to put in the name of our file here and maybe i should double check that just to make sure i'm instructions yes so it's not capitalized and it's the extension because it can be either htm or html in this case here we are using html and we just want to make sure that's correct there now this is going to be one of those things where previewing it uh, may or may not work depending on the location of that uh, file. Let's just test that out and see what that looks like. I'm guessing it may or may not load, but we'll find out in a second here. Yeah, so as you can see, it's not finding it because, of course, what I included in my um, Captivate file was just the name of the file, not the location. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to publish this, and we'll publish it for devices. We'll just call it demo and save it to our desktop here. Now I'm not going to preview it yet. I'm going to minimize Adobe Captivate. So there's my HTML file. There's the demo project I've just created. What I need to do at this point is drag this particular instructions file now into the same folder as my eLearning project. So now when it looks for instructions.html, it'll find the file. Let's run it by clicking or double clicking on the index file. And there we go. So now I have my HTML file with all of my text, my paragraph spacing, all the individual items like bulleted list, numbered lists, and one, more importantly, there's my table. If you've ever tried to work with tables in Adobe Captivate, you'll probably find that this is uh, 
much quicker to do and uh, a lot more effective. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonlb. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.